location. But this is one, two, three of the factors came out okay in both contexts. So that's kind of reassuring. There's kind of like these are the minimum items that might be universal. But here it's on both data sets. Yes, that's doing an invariance test of both data sets. And I'll talk about invariance later. Yes? Yeah, but why the item that is below uh, has only the common factor? Yeah, that's a good question. The, they could not, it would fit worse by having a factor there. This that would look prettier. Oh, yes, and you know, like, I'm going, please, why not? And they go, yeah, but it doesn't fit. And they go, okay, you're right. I want my elegant perspective to be universal, but it turns out that's an illusion. That's a pipe dream. All these American researchers who have been build, building education psychology scales with American university students. Do you know this expression? All of that data is White, educated, or is it wealthy, educated, individualistic, oh, maybe it's white, educated, individualistic, rich, and developed. Almost everything we think we know about the psychology of learning is based on university students in American universities who get credit for doing extra studies. They're not normal. <laughs> They're weird. Normal people are guys on the street who finished high school and are working and don't have time to go to college, don't have time to do stuff. And they're, you know, like, the cycle. they're learning. They're learning on their jobs. They're learning in contexts. And we don't, I'm, I'm not going to bet all of that stuff works with them. We'll prove it. The um, state motto of Missouri is show me. If you think this is true, show me. That's science. Although that's the Levon syntax. Here we go. The bad, the improved, the affect, the external. So I'm going for four meta factors instead of eight sub-factors. And there's the general factor, which is every single item put in the model. Yay! How to make sure you don't correlate certain things to the specific factors, one, two, three, four, are not correlated with the general factor. General correlated zero times VD plus zero times int plus zero times affect, plus zero times external. Okay? You have to tell it. There is no correlation. Do not try to put one in there. If you say nothing, it'll go, oh, these are all correlated. Which shows you how sort of stupid it is, right? It can't, it doesn't know, oh, these things on two sides don't go with each other. It doesn't know that. You have to tell it. But other factors will be correlated. Right? Yes, they will be, and if you don't want them to be, you would write that here. If you think, well, actually, these four shouldn't be correlated, you would write that here also. And you would say, BD, tilde, tilde, zero plus imp, zero plus, you just copy, paste, copy, paste, until you've said, no factors are correlated. If you want. I'd like to be a little more generous and allow them to and then you could be. The bifactor analysis is still a CFA of this model with this data set. So there's no change in command, it's still a CFA. And then to get the output. So, which, one of the things that's interesting here is to look at what explains the items more? 
the unique factor or the general factor? So here's the standardized 59, 59, 50, 29, 25, 24. So it looks in this set that the unique factor is a much stronger predictor, on average at least twice as strong as over here. And then in the improvement, 29, 30, these are not very big. These are quite small, except for that one, which is SI. Where's the SI? Here we go. Here's the SI. 60, 60, 60, 60. The general factor is much stronger, which suggests the general factor is almost identical to the improvement factor. Okay. So you, you can look at these different things and say, well, how, how do they behave? And then the affect, 50, 60, 70, 40, they're pretty strong also. Where's the affect, the CE ones? Here's the CE, 40, 40, 30, 40, 20, 30. It's weaker on the general, but still pretty strong. Why is it minus the Because the general goes up, the item goes down. Right? It's a regression value. So it means as one goes up, the other goes down. So some of these, so these are PE, SF, SF, SI. So it's all, but the negative ones go up. So it's like the general is saying is on bad, but then bad went in the model first. Maybe the sign would change if you put improvement first. Right? It depends on the seed value and what it processes first. Oh, you want me to do this first. If you don't want it like that, what can you do? You multiply this by minus one. It's identical, and then you're just switching the sign. And so then these would all be positive and that would be negative. And then you could define the general as a positive way of looking at assessment. You know, the healthy view of assessment, not negative, not bad, good for these things. And then what you find is the S external is, a couple of them are strong, but the rest of them are kind of weak, and the general. So the trade-off is general. Everything is significant. Oh, except here, look. Not statistically, well, yes, Yes, no, almost no. It's actually no. So these two items, TE5 and 6, are not actually explained by TI. They're actually explained very strongly by the general. Interesting. Hmm, I have to think about what does that mean? How do I explain it? to a reader, or should I just say, this is not interesting, or is it interesting? This is, I, would, I would say, here's a set of items that were designed to belong to a unique factor, and it turns out they're not actually explained by the unique factor, they're explained by the general factor. That cries out for a comment and an explanation or a speculation. The reviewer should ask you, well, wait a minute, that's a strange result. What do you think that means? Because everything else is at least statistically significant. It's just those two items are not. And you kind of have to be honest about that. Researchers think about the results. And here's our squared values. 4, 4, 4, 3, 2, 5, 6 reasonably strong power of explanation from the combination of the general factor and the unique factor. And there's your covariances. Notice these are zero because we told it to make it zero. And then we're now looking at the standardized values all here. Bad improvement 0.05, negative, bad affect, 39, bad external, 55, improvement, 37 with affect, 0.05 with external, not significant, not significant, external. So you could say, well, now that I know this, I should set 
bad improve and external improve to be zero. And it might cause it to fit the data better because those two are definitely no different to zero. And the variances. <laughs> Yay, nothing negative. 0 0.001. Yay, good. At least I don't have any warnings and problems. Fit. Is it a good fit? Uh, chi square, 1,405, 450. So that's 5 into 15. It's around 3 ish. That would be okay. 88. Uh, where's my CFI gone? CFI, almost 90. Again, probably will be over 90. RMSEA. 58, 55, and 61. Really small range because, again, SRMR, 49. Yeah, okay, you can say this is okay. And that's what SendPlot does. It's actually showing the covariances that are zero. I don't know how to switch that off, but maybe Dimitri or Maxine know how to switch that off in the syntax. And of course, I still can't read the numbers. If you can rotate it, that would be really cool that you read the numbers. And it would be really nice if the general was on the other side. And I don't know how to do that either. And this is what Levan plot does. It's, at least you can read it, but you can't follow it. <laughs> right? You know, like, this is a really interesting software, guys, but... Yes, question. Oh, yeah, because we have, uh, yeah, because we have very, uh, a lot of different outputs from uh, when we are analyzing results, but what is required to report? Ah, well, obviously you have to report the fit. You should report the loadings of the unique factor, the standardized loadings, of the unique factor and the uh, general factor, and you should report the correlation matrix. Those are pretty much standard, and then most people will go, okay, so what about the means? <laughs> and people will want to know the factor means, because we th intuitively think that's meaningful. We're going to group items into a factor, so tell me about the factor. Um, and then the real hard work is so what does this mean about my population? How do they view the phenomenon? Which is why we did the survey. We didn't do the survey in order to test a model. We did, tested a model to tell us something about the people. But yeah, loadings, fit, correlations, means, and standard deviations would be, in my view, sine qua non, the, the thing you must have. Otherwise, you're doing a psychometric paper, not a content paper. And all of the work you did in developing the model, almost nobody cares. They just want to know what the answer is. We're really, in education and psychology, we're pretty much if you're writing for a stats journal or a methods journal, they'll want to know all that other stuff. You know, show me the multiple models. They, if you tested multiple models, uh, like you might test a one-factor model, the four-factor model, and then the bi-factor model, because that's a logical progression, and say, look at the improvement in fit by doing that, um, then some journals would want to see that comparison fit table. Uh, some journals might say, oh, that's really boring. Put that in a supplementary table uh, that's online but not in the print journal. And if you're in a online journal, they'll go, sure, no problem, stick it in. No, because space is not a limit. Frontiers, a standard article is 12,000 words and 10 tables and six pictures or something, you know, like 
there's immense space to put in all the cool, cute study stuff that people might want. And of course, the real answer is the scholarship is not the analysis. The scholarship is the explanation. The technicians, I mean, I can, I can see giving you a master's degree for being able to do the analysis, but the doctorate is for the so what question. Technical reports tend not to care too much about the so what. They just want to know how did you get there and what did you find? And we'll figure it out. Lunchtime? Yep. I'm going to come back to half analysis after lunch.